Hello everybody, welcome back to Plain Simple. Today we're tackling the question of air conditioning. How is air conditioning done on aircrafts? In this video we're going to be talking about two different types of air conditioning systems. The goal for both is the same, to cool the air or to transfer f heat. Um, but they do it in, in two separate, and then two different methods. One of them is what we have here, and it's a, it uses a refrigerant, a, a, a gas specifically selected to do this function. And the other one, and the, the other one is an, called an air cycle, and it's used on bigger airplanes. We'll, we'll get to that in the second part of this video, possibly on another video. But we'll start with this one now. And, and this type of system is a closed loop system that uses a refrigerant gas. Freon, R32, R12, etc., etc. This system is what cars, buses, trucks use. Uh, small piston aircrafts. Um, houses the window units that hang on 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 the windows they they all use this type of system that is a closed loop system um, I've drawn here a, a simplified schematic a diagram of of how the system works to try and ex and make it easier to explain uh, we'll start with a compressor and we'll follow the path of the gas all around here um, this system well, the, the, starting from the compressor, you have the compressor that pumps the, the refrigerant in gaseous form as a gas and it raises the temperature and it gets hot and it gets to the condenser. It goes through the condenser, it gets cooled, it remains at high pressure but now to lower temperature, it goes through an expansion valve, from there it goes to an evaporator. And from the evaporator, it goes back to the compressor. And you start the same loop again. Compressor, condenser, expansion valve, evaporator, and back to the compressor again. Doing that loop over and over again. And in the process, carrying heat from here to here. And dumping it overboard here. Now we're going to get a little more specific as to how that process works. This system works on the principle of latent heat or the, the fact that a gas when it when it changes phases from gas to a liquid it lets go of heat or if you start with a gas in other words if you start with a gas and remove enough heat away from it it will condensate into a liquid and that is the purpose the function of the condenser is exactly that to remove heat from the gas so that it can condensate hence the name condenser so the gas what starts out as a gas will condensate into a liquid now starting from the compressor we have a mechanical um, compressor that pump it's a bit a pump that compresses this refrigerant this gas and raises its pressure also raising its temperature. So now you have a pipe with a high temperature, high pressure gas flowing in that direction to the condenser. Now you have ambient air being blown through this heat exchanger here, which is the condenser. And that ambient air, as it goes by, it draws heat from this high temperature, from this hot gas. It draws heat away from it. When it does that, that gas can now become cold enough to condensate into a liquid. Mind you, it's still at high pressure. The only change that happens here is it goes from a high temperature to a lower temperature, but the pressure is still high. A little lower than before, but still high pressure. But it is now in liquid form. In the condenser, this gas goes from gas to liquid. And in the process, and that happens because we're taking heat away from it. Now you have a cooler 
in this case warm but cooler than original than it started um, it's a warm liquid still at high pressure and you run that through an expansion valve an expansion valve is, is a restricted it, it's a calibrated orifice it's a small little hole basically to simplify the, its principle that provides enough of a restriction for the compressor to push up against and actually be able to build up pressure here on this side of the system if you didn't have that restriction here the compressor would would just become a pump that circulated the gas back and forth but it would not raise the pressure here now that you have this restriction it gives the compressor something to push up against so you can have a rise in pressure on this side so now you have this uh, cooled high pressure liquid coming up to this restriction as it comes out the other side you no longer have a restriction so the high pressure liquid it loses a lot of its pressure by going through here because now you're past that restriction restriction now it can flow freely back to the compressor so the minute you drop its pressure on the other side of the, the expansion valve now that liquid is a low pressure low temperature liquid now you come over here and and pipe it over to the evaporator you're starting with a low temperature low pressure liquid flowing through the evaporator and now you have interior all this here is inside of your car inside of your house inside of whatever compartment you want to cool off by drawing heat away from here and dumping it out over there so now you start here with a low temperature low pressure liquid and as you have interior air being blown by through this heat exchanger now you're taking heat from here and dumping it in here since you're adding heat to this low pressure low temperature liquid it can now boil off not boil but it, uh, basically boiling it changes faces again from liquid to a gas when it does that it draws temperature in so as this liquid comes in through here and it turns into a gas it evaporates hence the name evaporator it is drawing heat in and takes it with it so to change from liquid to gas it draws heat into it changing so that it and 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 because of the extra heat it now changes into a gas and it gets sucked in back to the compressor so now you're taking heat away from here along with the gas you compress it and you come and you dump it overboard on the condenser so this gas is absorbing heat from your interior space here taking it over and dumping it overboard outside an, an interesting principle of this phase change from from gas to liquid and back liquid to gas over here is a good example of that that we're all familiar with is melting ice or uh, boiling water you can get a pot of water and dump a, a bunch of ice in it and the temperature of the liquid water is going to come down until a freezing point of water at that point the ice is going to start to melt and, the, and as long as there's ice in the pot of water to be melted the temperature of the water is not going to get any lower than the freezing temperature of water 32 degrees or zero Fahrenheit uh, zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit um, that means that ambient heat is getting dumped into the pot of water with the ice melting the ice and all the ice is melting but the temperature is not getting any lower or higher it's going to remain at that 32 degrees as long as the water is changing phase from solid to liquid from ice to water the other way around well not the other way around if you continue that pattern and you go from solid to liquid now go from liquid to gas and you start with liquid water in the pot of water 
and you put it on the stove over a fire you give it heat of some sort and the temperature of the water is going to start to rise it's going to go up and up and up until it reaches the boiling point of water 100 uh, celsius or 212 fahrenheit and you can keep pumping heat into that pot of water and the temp temperature is not going to rise at all it's going to stay at 212 or 100 degrees uh, Celsius. It's going to stay at the boiling point. And then the, the water is going to keep changing face from liquid to gas, but the temperature is going to remain the same. But yet you keep pumping heat in and the temperature doesn't change. All you're doing is changing face from liquid to gas. That's what we're doing here. We're pumping heat from the interior of your car or your airplane or whatever you're pumping heat into here and all you're doing is changing the liquid refrigerant to gas refrigerant temperature at this evaporator stays at a pretty constant uh, cold temperature because as long as you have refrigerant changing face here you can keep pumping heat into it and all that heat is being absorbed by the change of phase from liquid to gas and now you take that temperature, that heat energy that you're collecting here in the gas, bring it over to the condenser, and now you release that energy to outside, to ambient air, by changing the, the hot gas into a liquid. Take heat away from it. That All that heat you, you just picked up over here, you bring it over and you dump it out overboard here. And you do that by taking care, taking advantage of the fact that principle of that that, that effect of the f change of faces from gas to liquid. So we're here. We're picking up heat, converting from liquid to gas, having the face change here, and when we come across to this side, have the face change in the opposite direction from gas to liquid, dumping all that heat overboard. So this is an air conditioning system that is a closed loop and it uses a, a refrigerant that is dialed in and is selected because of the temperatures and pressures that it had that this phase change happens at. And you can design the system to, to take advantage of those parameters. Um, in airplanes, what airplanes have this smaller... Um, a piston powered aircraft that would have the compressor be driven by the engine just like you would in a car uh, some smaller jets like some older Lear jets have this type of system but once you get into bigger airplanes bigger uh, turbine powered uh, jet powered uh, airplanes you no longer use this system now you get into what's called an air cycle and it's even cooler than this. I think it's even cooler than this. It's pretty cool because it does not. It is an open loop system, and it does not use any uh, refrigerant. And yeah, I'm about 14 minutes into this video, so yeah, I'll I'll, I'll break that off here, and uh, I'll talk about the air cycle, air conditioning system, in in the upcoming video. Anyways, thank you for sticking along. Thank you for. <laughs> For watching my uh, my video I hope this diagram helps and I hope my explanation helps explain how this system works hopefully it makes a little more sense um, once you understand the principles of what's going on here it's really not that difficult uh, anyways thank you guys very much for watching uh, stay safe I hope to hear from you guys in the comments and uh, see you next time